Welcome to another video tutorial for Manage Engine Service Desk Plus Cloud. In this tutorial video, we are going to take a look at the change enhancements. The new change enhancements include change templates, roles, and workflows. Let's start up with change customization. Under the setup portion in Service Desk Plus Cloud, you will start by creating change types. Change types define what type of a change you are going to create and you can also create a custom change type and define it with pre-approvals. You can also define cab members, the change advisory board. You can create a new cab by clicking the new cab button and both end users and technicians who has login to service desk can be a part of the cab. You can also now define risk for a change. Risk is going to represent the criticality of a change during its implementation. You will be able to create custom risks or use any of the predefined risks. You can also define reason for creating this change. For example, if a printer in your organization keeps on failing, and that's the reason for creating this particular change request. You can also define closure codes on what action the change was closed, whether it was approved, canceled, or completed. You can also define custom closure codes as well. Then, stage and status. You will be able to define new stage and status apart from the default ones. The default one include submission, planning, cab evaluation, implementation, review, and close. And under each stage, you can define numerous statuses. Like submission stage can have accepted, rejected, requested. Likewise, planning can have the same and additional statuses as well. You can also create change roles in the application. With the help of change roles, you will be able to define access permissions for each and every change request in the application. By default, we provide you with change viewer, change owner, change manager or approver roles in the application. Apart from that, you can also create a new change role and specify the access permissions for change requests in the application. All the users in your organization can be associated to this role or it can only be technicians. You will be able to define that while creating a change role in the application. Going forward through this tutorial video, I will show you where change roles plays a part and how you can associate them to templates. Change workflows. With the help of workflows, you will now be able to define the life cycle for a change request. You will be able to define workflow by clicking on the new workflow button. This will bring you up the change workflow editor. Over here, you will have the default stage and the close stage. You can additionally add the other stages that you like to have and the statuses under each of the stage. You can also define approval for a change by dragging the approval option. Give it a name for the approval. Specify what the approval needs to wait for. Should everybody approve or anyone can approve or wait for the first response action. Then you can specify the cab members who are part of the cabs and who need to approve this particular change or users and change roles as well. You can also define the subject and the body of the approval message. For example, if you want a change to go to an approval upon stage one accepted status, drag a line from accepted to the approval tab on top. If it is approved, Move it to stage 2 for approval. If it is approved, move it to stage 2 planning and set the status as approved. If it is denied, you could directly move the change to the close stage and cancel status. Or you can also send it to stage 2 and set the rejected status for it. You can also update fields, send out notifications, switch fields and set a condition before moving on to stages in the application. I'm going to show you a predefined change workflow that we built. So this is a simple workflow where once a request is submitted, it goes to submission stage requested status. If it is accepted, it goes to stage two planning. And if it is approved, and if it is approved, it goes to cab evaluation, implementation, etc. Over here, you can also add additional nodes and customize the workflow as per your preference. This is another change workflow that we have built for a firewall upgrade. As you can see, you can customize your change workflows 
any way as you prefer in, in this Service Desk Plus Cloud application. You will be able to associate the change workflows to templates in the application. Change templates. Just like how we have templates for incidents and service requests, we have also introduced templates for the change management. You can create a template by clicking on the new change template button and give it a name. You can specify what type of a change is it and you can also specify the workflow. Just like the incident template, you will be able to add additional fields to a change template like single line field, multi line field, pick list, numeric and date and time type of fields. Additionally, you can also create a section and add additional fields under it. This helps you to group fields in a change template. Once you save a template, you will be able to define the roles for this particular change template. You can define what are the roles that are going to be associated with this particular change template. Should it have a change approver? Should there be a viewer permission? Should there be an implementer permissions? All the change roles that you create will be listed over here and you can also create a new role by simply dragging this new role field and adding it to the template. So that is how you can create change templates in the Service Desk Plus Cloud version. Now let's take a look on how you can create the change request with the change templates in the application. Let's go to the changes tab and click on the new change button. As you can see, you have the choose template option on top from where you can choose the templates that you have created. This will also show you the workflow which is predefined to this template. If you want to choose a different workflow, you also have the option to do that. Specify who is the requester for this particular change, who is going to be the owner for this change, who is going to be the change manager, and you can also define additional fields like what is going to be the impact, what is the urgency uh, for this particular change request. You can also specify the categories, uh, what are the assets that are involved, the services that are affected, and specify the reason for a change. Let's call this change request as a device upgrade change. And let's give that in the description. As you can see, you have the role section over here. Over here, you can specify who is the change approver, who is going to review this change, the line manager and the implementer, and click on save. This is your new change window. On the left hand side, you get the stages, and on the right hand side, you get the status, the workflow, the templates, the type of change, and who is the owner for this particular change. If you want to view the workflow that is associated with this change, click on the workflow button. So this is the workflow and currently this change is in stage one submission stage. So let's go ahead and change the status of this particular change to accepted. Once I click on save, it should move to the second stage, the planning. Under the planning section, you'll be able to define the impact details for this particular change. What is your rollout plan? What is your backup plan? The checklist, the downtime, you can add these details as a text or attach it as a file to this particular change. Once the planning details are submitted, the change owner or the change manager can come in and change the status of the particular change. So I'm going to call this as an approved change. Once I click on approved, a notification is sent to me and I'm going to do a recommendation on this particular change. So if I click on the notification or the approvals button, I get to view the details of the change that is submitted to me. I can view the details and I can approve this particular change. And since the change is approved, it is automatically moved on to the implementation tab as per the workflow. In the implementation tab, you can specify the tasks, the workflows and the downtimes and the associations if it's associated to any project and you can also define approvals and status comments. And next stage will be the review stage. The technician can define the details of the review. So if there is any review, he can add it as a text or attach it as a file. And if there is going to be a next review, he will be able to configure the date. And once that is complete, I'm going to say complete it again. And now the change will move on to the close stage. In the close stage, I can specify the details of the close. What is the closure code? What is the, if there are any approvals and comments, I can specify that and I will be able to complete the change in the application. So this is a very simple workflow for a change request in the application. Additionally, you can also converse within a change request itself. You can add notes, send out email notifications from the application. You can also associate this change to a request, problem or project in the application. 
If there are any tasks defined, you get the tasks view here, reminders, approvals, and work logs. You can also get a quick history on what has happened on this particular change request. And that's the new change module, the templates, the workflows, and the change details. If you have any queries, do let us know or write to our support email address at servicedesk plus iphone on demand iphone support at managingjit.com and we'll be glad to assist you further thank you